I am very uncomfortable going in here. Quite shocking to see. This is where Americans come to get groceries. They put it all in one spot. That's none of your business. Why would you ask me that? Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. We're going to be checking out a channel called NALF, and the video is called, After Seven Years in Germany, This Shocks Me About the USA. So, uh, yeah, so this guy's been living in Germany. Um, I'm pretty sure I've done some reactions on his before. I am subscribed to the channel, as you can see here. I'm going to go ahead and click like on the video. Um, and, of course, the link to the original video will be down in the descrip description section, so you guys can jump over there and click like on it as well. But, uh, yeah, so he's an American that lives in Germany, okay? And I can't remember which videos that I've done by his, but I do remember I've done some reactions to this channel before. And this one is a priority request from John. So shout out to you, John. I appreciate it a lot. And, uh, yeah, so this is going to be a pretty good, uh, pretty good video, I feel like. Because, like I said, I do like the guy's channel. I, I do remember, like, I don't remember a lot about it. I just remember it was good, right? I don't subscribe to them unless they're good. And, of course, you can tell that I'm subscribed. So, anyways, um, links down below if you want to support the channel and make a priority request for yourself. And, uh, yeah, we're going to find out what this is all about. Because I know in the last seven years, that's a long time. A lot can change. Um so I don't know exactly what shocks him about the U.S., but the U.S. is not the same as it was seven years ago. I could tell you that much right now. And John knows what I'm talking about. Things are changing. Like that song, the times they are changing. I don't know. I can't sing. I wasn't really putting a valid effort in there. Don't roast me on my singing, guys. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to check this out and see what this is all about. I have lived in a small German town called Schwäbisch Hall for the past seven years. I am currently back at my home in the States, and I am okay. getting bombarded with reverse culture shock. I am very uncomfortable going in here. Quite shocking to see. This is where Americans come to get groceries. They put it all in one spot. That's none of your business. Why would you ask me that? We <laughs> yeah, so he's getting bombarded with culture shocks. Yeah, so seven years, man. That's, that's a long time. For sure. And, 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 you know, you get used to one thing, even though he's going back to, to his original country, you know, here in the United States, seven years is a long time to get used to something else, you know? So then you come back and it's like, oh, wow, I forgot about this. Or, oh, this is different. Cause like I said, you know, and we all know seven years, a lot can change. Made it in. <laughs> My biggest reverse culture shocks in the USA after living in Germany. All right. Shout this out coffee. This drives me crazy. This is a pepper, also known as a paprika. How much do you think this costs? 39 cents. How ex... Also known as a paprika? I didn't know that. So is paprika the seasoning? Is that just ground up bell pepper? This is a pepper, also known as a paprika. How much do you think this costs? 39 cents. How expensive grocery prices are so, 79 oh. cents dollar 50 that's bull crap isn't that crap? yeah you uh, the grocery prices and you know and this is this is one thing that really gets me i'll watch videos um there's a there's a russian guy named nikki prashin and i haven't watched him in a while it's probably been close to a year but at the height of the russia ukraine you know special military operation or whatever you want to call it he would do videos and stuff, and he still does, of course, but he lives in like Thailand or something now. So Nikki Prashin's done videos where he'll compare, like he'll go into the, like he, a year ago, he would go into the Russian supermarkets and stuff and, and, and do the pricing on the, on the, the vegetables and the fruits, the, you know, just the overall food in general. And it shocked me how cheap it is because he would convert it to US dollars, right? And I'm thinking in my head, like, wow, that's like four times cheaper than here. Like, and then there's, there's other countries I can't think of, you know, I can't remember off the top of my head where they would do the same thing. They would go in, they would check out the grocery prices, convert it to us dollars. And I'm like, wow, what in the world is going on? Like there's American brands like Lay's that you can get in other countries for like a quarter of the price that you can get them here. Like, how is it that our companies are selling stuff here for four times more? Than, than shipping it overseas. It, it's crazy to me. Crazy? Especially. 
<laughs> and then he said crazy. Really healthier food. Basically oh, yeah. twice the price of this in Germany. Fruits and vegetables are way higher priced here, at least in Oregon compared to in Germany. And it's not just fruits and vegetables. Other staples such as meat, eggs, and cheese are more expensive as well. Yeah, yeah, everything is very expensive. I was looking it up. Actually, you can compare a lot of the prices. Check out some of these price differentials. There's a cost of living calculator where I compare tons of different items between Germany and Portland, Oregon. Tomatoes, 125.2% okay. more expensive. Apples, 130.2%. Oranges, 134.7% more expensive in Portland, Oregon than in Germany. And you see why a lot of Americans are unhealthy because it is so much cheaper to eat low quality or fast food here in the state. This is often why in the states poverty and obesity are related just because it is so difficult for people to eat healthily at a reasonable price. And I'm noticing this when we go grocery shopping here. Yeah, and then like if you go to a fast food place, you know, not anymore, but you used to be able to get like a McDouble at McDonald's for like a dollar and then it went up to $1.49. I think now they're almost like $3 for one. But anyways, Back when it was like, say, a dollar forty nine, right? A salad was like five bucks or something. Like I can't remember for sure, but it was just an astronomically insane price compared to, you know. And it's like, what? It's just like lettuce and some, some dressing and like you know, a couple of like slithers of like boiled egg and like a strip of chicken. You know what I mean? It's it's just crazy to me how much more expensive healthy food actually is like and if you want to go get like some grapes or watermelon or whatever jeez you, you could get you know how many tv dinners you could buy for that same price and of course tv dinners aren't is going to aren't going to be as healthy as like fresh fruits and vegetables but people get the the cheap crappy stuff because it's just so much cheaper you can get a massive bag of french fries here for like a couple bucks um you know for like throwing in the deep fryer or the oven you probably get like six grapes for a couple bucks, like a, an exaggeration, of course, but you get what I'm saying. Behind me, we have a marijuana dispensary, a store where you can just go in and, and buy weed. It looks like a regular store. It looks like a coffee shop. Nice on the outside, and these are everywhere. If you Not seven years ago, probably. That's probably why it's a shock to him are 21 or older in my state of Oregon and a handful of other states, marijuana is totally legal not just for medical purposes, but for recreational as well. In Germany, marijuana seems to be much more of a taboo subject, whereas in the states, it's much more open and much more accepted. And it's kind of it, it, it really depends on the state that you're at, because in the state of Indiana, it's still illegal you will definitely get in trouble for it. Kind of crazy because this big boom, especially the recreational side of it, kind of happened while I was over in Germany. So to come from a culture where it's a little more hush-hush taboo to a culture in Oregon where it is mainstream, it's all over the place and totally legal is quite shocking. That's why a lot of German people go to the Netherlands coffee shops to, to get their smoke. I mean, it's legal, right? It's totally legal. Okay. This one's kind of wild to me. People almost treat politics here like a sport. People will have bumper stickers of their favorite or preferred political candidate, yeah. or they'll have signs of their name in their yard, or even flags of their favorite political candidates. This is something that you do not see in Germany. I feel like in Germany, people's political leanings are much more private for the most part, or at least are not displayed like a sports team flag. It's like so funny. You'll see, uh, you know, a bumper sticker with a political candidate and then an NFL team. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> feels like it's a sport. <laughs> kind of wild to see. This I'm not political necessarily. I don't see myself as a Republican. I don't see myself as a Democrat. I just, I have my viewpoints and my viewpoints are my viewpoints. You know, I don't align myself to to one party or the next or anything like that, you know? And I feel like there's there's some stuff about Republicans uh, that makes sense, but other stuff that don't make sense. Same with Democrats. There's some stuff that they, that they go for that makes sense to me and other stuff that don't. So it's like to choose one or the other doesn't make sense to me because I don't agree fully with either one of them. And they're all just crooked politicians anyways. Like, let me be president. There we go. That's a new one. Charlie for president. <laughs> this one is quite interesting and it is shared by many Americans that I know that went over to Europe and now come back in the States. And also with Laura is that 
for the first few days of coming back to the States, you feel just a little bit sick. When I started eating American food, I got really sick. My tummy hurt. And then I started to get all bloated and had uh, um, a depression. <laughs> that was from something else. But nonetheless, the food made me sick. That was my reverse culture shock. Oh, gotta take this. Yep, get over my. It's kind of like this low-grade nausea. And it happens yeah. to me almost every single time I come back to the States after being in Germany for a prolonged period. And my theory is that my body, having lived in Germany for many months at a time, has gotten used to not having all of these American chemicals and preservatives and stuff in the food. And then when I come back to the States and start eating American food, my body is just shocked at the amount of chemicals and different things that we put in our food. And it has like a negative reaction to it. Guys, I yeah, there is a ton of chemicals, um, so many chemicals in our food. It's it's ridiculous. But I thought he was going <laughs> to, he said he, he felt sick or whatever. I thought he was going to go for like, I thought he was going to mention like the jet lag thing. But like, look right here, you know, in, in Europe, you got vegetable oil and that's it. I think there is salt in it because I've I seen a video, um, Food Wars, that, that compares like uh, the British McDonald's with American McDonald's. Um, you guys have probably seen it. It's a pretty popular video. It gets recommended all the time on YouTube. And it was just like vegetable oil and salt. So I think they did. I think he did leave out the salt there, but I, I could be wrong. I could be misremembering it. And then of course you got the USA uh, version. I could have swore there was more chemicals in that as well. If you check out that food wars video, uh, you could confirm or not confirm it or whatever, but, uh, either way you can see in the comparison right here that there's definitely more chemicals in the American version. Chemicals and different things that we put in our food and it has like a negative reaction to it. Guys, I've got a bit of a problem. I'm back in the States right now, as you know, and I purchased NFL Game Pass International, but it does not work in the States. VPN sponsor. Luckily, I've also got a solution. I just switched my IP address back to Germany and then I could watch no problem. And that is thanks to the sponsor of today's video, CyberGhost VPN. I do the same thing when I'm in Germany and I want to watch geo-blocked content from the States. All right, back to the video. Back we the video. are going to a high school football game. So Woo, sunset! <laughs> I'm not a huge sports person, so I'm not one of those Americans that are all about the sports and, and with the bumper stickers and, and have a favorite team. And I, I don't watch sports. Like literally the last sports I watched was the Women's FIFA Cup finals uh like the whole like a lot of the tournament like with the women the soccer you guys call it football that's pretty interesting i i think i would like to get into some football soccer whatever you want to call it and ice hockey that interests me a little bit i haven't watched a ice hockey match in years though years but uh I, I'm not into like basketball or football or anything like that. Having football, my football, American football, be the most popular sport. Obviously in Germany, American football is a smaller sport, more of a niche sport. It is growing, but it is not popular like the way it is here in the States. We went to a high school football game and it was so fun and cool to see just how football centric American culture is. The whole community coming to this high school football game little kids the youth teams all the way up to parents and grandparents and seeing how football is just a very prominent and important part of american culture i love that it is so fun high school sports are great football is great and it is very positively shocking for me to be back in that and and it depends on where you're at the region of course the united states is massive and then you got different uh you know every, every you got different styles of people different you know uh interests and stuff like that so of course you got your sports nuts and then you got your people that don't like sports maybe they're into rock music or you know what i mean so it's just it's a it's a vast vast difference between the people here you can't generalize everybody into one category just like i'm sure with whatever country you're watching from it's the same thing you know everybody doesn't have the typical characteristics that the videos would point out about your country there's going to be groups of people that have different viewpoints and, and whatnot. Um, but it is a huge thing here. Uh, there is a lot of people that get into football, that's for sure. So picture this, is the first couple days that I'm back here in the States, I picked up Laura, we're about to head south on a little road trip. We stopped at sort of this drive-through cafe, coffee shop place, and the cashier is 
so talkative and so friendly and asking, hey, so what are you guys up to today? And I actually froze for a second thinking, that's none of your business. Why would you ask me that? <laughs> then I kind of realized again, okay, I'm back in the States. This is totally normal to have this small talk, friendly interaction with people. Always like when you're paying by card or something and it takes a couple seconds, there's that kind of little moment. That's when oftentimes people will be like, so what are you doing today? It's just your classic American friendliness, but this does not happen in Germany at all. And so I was really shocked when that happened to me during my first couple of days back here in the States. <laughs> now I'm back used to it again. You guys know I love the uh, pleasant American small talk. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. But when you've been in Germany for a long time and you've gotten used to more German interactions or lack thereof, some cashier that you don't know asking you, what are you up to today or what are you up to this weekend, felt a little invasive at first glance. What you have here is a strip mall, okay? And I know what you're thinking. Not that kind of strip. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, strip mall, it's basically a mall where the stores open to the outside. There's a big parking lot here. There's so many strip malls in the United States. Basically, yeah. all of our stores and infrastructure is built around strip malls. This is a bunch of stores on the road. It's basically a big old parking lot because everything revolves around the car. Then you've got a bunch of stores lining the outside of the parking lot. I always think about the German Fußgängerzone or pedestrian areas, the shopping areas in Germany, and how much more pedestrian oriented they are compared to the car centric American strip mall. So you guys don't have that there, huh? Which it makes sense, you know, American capitalists and, the, you know, you just put like a massive parking lot up and then you have a whole bunch of stores that are all connected and you can go and, you know, into Sherwin-Williams and buy your paint. You know, you can go next door when you're done and get some lunch, a couple doors down, go to the bank, cash your check, whatever, you know, whatever you get to, you know, you got to do just for an example. But yeah, I never really thought about that. I guess that probably is not over in Europe so much. So I mentioned strip malls. We have one of those kind of close to our house. Maybe it's a kilometer away. And Laura and I have been very European. We've been walking down to the strip mall to the coffee shop. And during these walks, we kind of noticed basically how much of an afterthought pedestrians are. Like how long it takes for the light to turn green for the pedestrians compared to the cars. You get yeah. a real sense of the car supremacy in the United States. The pedestrian is a second class citizen compared to drivers of cars. It's also interesting that there's certain places on the road where I feel like in Germany, there would be crosswalks here, the kind of like natural crossings for pedestrians. But at least in the area that I live, there are not crosswalks there. So we always have to jaywalk to get across the street. We just crossed the street, but we had to wait a long time because there's no crosswalks and everything is uh, more made for the cars. This one's pretty sad and it's just the amount of homeless people and, and tents everywhere, especially driving around the city on a lot of different intersections. There are always homeless people with signs asking for money there or groups of people or a lot of tents off on the side of the road and kind of like these little tent communities. Uh, it's, it's very sad and it's pretty shocking to see, especially after living in a small German town for so many years where this just does not really exist. Yeah, you do see that quite a bit when you, it, it, more so in bigger cities, um, you know, m you know, the, the smaller towns, you know, there's, there's definitely still homeless people, but they're not like out there with the signs and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And, it, but I do feel like a lot of the homeless people around here gravitate towards the bigger cities because there is a lot more people, uh, that, you know, to help you if you, you know, if you put a cardboard sign up that says, you know will work for food or whatever there's a lot more infrastructure that uh, you could blend into or or get shelter from than a, than a small city you know a small town but you do see that like sometimes um like going to walmart or kroger uh you'll just every now and then you know it's not often maybe once every couple of weeks once a month something like that you'll see somebody out there with a cardboard sign but it's not super often in my town well i don't live in town now but the closest town to me but if you go somewhere like chicago which is the third biggest city in the country it's like every corner you'll see people with cardboard signs you'll see people sleeping on the street and and all that and it's 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 really sad how incomprehensibly large the united states is i really noticed this with driving down to yosemite with laura the other week and we're just driving for hours and hours and hours 
and barely passing through another state. You know, it took like seven hours to get through my state to the next state. We are moving through Southern Oregon now, soon get across into the Nevada border. If you drive like that in Europe, you're gonna be driving through three different countries with three different cultures and three different languages. That's what I've of heard. course, yeah, we've got pretty populated cities, but the space in between there is wild to think. Yeah, and it's just open land in between the cities, for sure. Think about it. When we drove down to Yosemite, we went for an hour and a half without seeing another building or a gas station. It actually got kind of scary. We were worried that we were going to get stranded in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. All right, guys, that's all for today. I want to give a shout out again to the sponsor. Of yeah, that's a good video, guys. Um, there's not really a whole lot to add to it. I kind of reacted to it along the way, you know, while we were watching the video and everything. Um, I do want to say thank you to John for the priority request. And um, if you guys want to go down and uh, hit like on the video and drop a comment, I would appreciate it. And if I earned your subscription, you enjoy this video, consider hitting subscribe. It would definitely help the channel out a lot. I do want to get to 100,000 uh, subscribers and get that nice silver shiny uh, you know, YouTube play button to, uh, to hang on the wall and just have something, you know, of an accomplishment in my life. It'd be pretty sweet. But anyways, thank you for the video, John. I loved it. It was a good video. And uh, yeah, you guys have a super fun, awesome day. Take care. I'll see you in the next one.